Welcome to Look At Her, the Hey Queen After Show, where our super celebrity guests look at some of the queens they played with, slayed with, or even laid with, and spills a little tea. Mm, it's hot! Or throws a little shade, only if they have to. Or just tells us something that we don't know. Today, we have the superstar, Mr. and Mrs. Luzon. <laughs> Manila Luzon and Michael Alvarez. Yes. Welcome back to the Hey Queen couch for your third visit, honey. I'm so excited. But this time you brought your man because you're married now. Yes, we are attached to the hip. We are quarantined. I have separa separation anxiety now. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is my uh, he's my um, best Judy, best Judy and <laughs> emotional support animal. Right. <laughs> well, welcome my emotional support orchestra, Adam Joseph and Erica Toraviyans. Looking like Andy Warhol and the specter of death that loomed around him. Uh, <laughs> Which one am I? <laughs> now, I thought it would be great fun because on the main show, we had Michael talking about the wedding, talking about their life together. And I said, who has been with Manila every minute for the last, what is it, nine years? Eight years? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Well, it's Mr. Michael right there. I am pretty sure that you have done some looking yourself at oh, all yeah. of these queens. Uh, <laughs> so we can get the couple's response. It's gonna be extra juicy. Now, Manila, you played this game almost more than anyone else. Oh, it's so much fun. But <laughs> the, wor the worst part is like, you don't tell us who we're gonna be looking at. So <laughs> right. I'm like, try, like trying to think of a good story sometimes <laughs> that isn't like, you know, gonna like, make them have, you know, texting me later, like, what did you say? Oh, hey, queen. Right. <laughs> well, I told you that in confidence. Right. <laughs> Let's see if we can get more people angry at Manila. <laughs> okay, let us begin. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> no angry here, it's Latrice Royale. Latrice. Podcast partner, mm -hmm. Rob the video one partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Latrice is one of the most fantastic um, things that I've like got to take away from being on RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, our, my friendship with her is like really cool. So I'm really, really, really excited that you, she's the first one to kind of break it in. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> now, do you and Michael and her and Christopher ever have some double dates? Um, sometimes, like, well, sometimes, like. If we are, if they're like in um, Los Angeles, like we'll definitely have like a, we'll meet up, have a smoke sesh, you know? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Every time you're recording your podcast, uh, Christopher and I are actually like FaceTiming each other, having our own little key key. So we look at that as our own little like, you know, Friday night date. Right. It's pretty funny. No, I really love, I really love the fact that like Latrice and I, we've we've been able to like share in so many of these like similar experiences you know like we are uh, drag queens from tv we are in committed relationships i mean we like it, there's so they're both libras so like there's like so many things that like we have in common you know so like we can talk each other we can talk to each other about like each other yeah. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, I mean, like, Latrice, this is what uh, this is what Michael's up to. She's like, oh my god, that's exactly what Christopher's doing. <laughs> so. Libras go through the same emotions at the same time. And the one story that I would love to share about Latrice is at her wedding, we actually a few of us skipped DragCon to attend this beautiful wedding in Atlanta. And before anyone walked down the aisle, I'm just tearing yeah. because the environment that. Christopher and Timothy, Latrice, set up for everyone was just absolute love and acceptance, and it was gorgeous. So I remember crying before they even walked down the yeah, aisle. Yeah, it was a lot of crying at their wedding, for sure. Like, everyone was fucking crying at their wedding. Like, right. it, was, it was the waterworks, for sure. Yeah. Now, when you finally got off All Stars and came home, did you call up Latrice and say, Bitch, <laughs> what was that conversation like? Um, yeah, I was, I, I, I was, um, 
Yeah, because like she got sent home, I think the next week. Yeah. So like I was, I was like, okay, well at least she's going to get to the, get to the top. And I was like, oh bitch, they sent her home. Okay, all right, I see what it is. Mm -hmm. All right, they were just. It didn't matter who went home first. They were just good. Those kids were going to send us old school queens home. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. No, it was like a, it was a fun trip. Like we we really like really had. We've done this before, so we knew what to expect, and we really knew what we were going into, and we knew that, like, now that the show is over, like, that's when the work starts. Yeah. And that's why you made your video, Rob. That's why we have a video together, we have our podcast together, we are doing big things, the Trilla. Yes, honey. All right. Look at her. Here comes the pain. <laughs> uh, Naomi Smalls, the glamorous and beautiful, but she sent you home. I mean... <laughs> if, if it wasn't her, it was going to be one of the other queens. So right. like, I, mean, I can't be mad. I can't be mad. Yeah, I was definitely a target. And um, I don't blame her for taking that shot, you know? Like, it, it really made for some outstanding dramatic television. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, it, it kind of worked out in my favor because um, the reaction from the fans was so supportive of, you know, like, it's better to be told, like, you should have won, or you were robbed, than you shouldn't have won. Right. Yeah, you, know, yes. you were undeserving <laughs> of being at the top, you know, so that's, that's a blessing. Also, the other blessing is, is that she prevented me from having to be in that god-awful um, RuPaul's video at the very end. Oh. <laughs> Super <laughs> Queen. <laughs> that really, like, slowed-down version right. of Super Jesus. Queen. Super Queen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, like, I'm happy that I got to skip that because that would have been, that would have been a, a hot mess for me, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now, Naomi uh, really did show herself... Uh, I think a new side of herself on All Stars. You got to see the back bend and her lip syncs were, you know, more than we even got to see on her season. Yeah, I mean, she she had like, I mean, everyone gets to come back and they get to showcase something. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that by episode eight, she finally got to show something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, oh, I gosh. think you might need this man. <laughs> Okay, look at <laughs> Monet oh, Exchange. Oh my gosh. She also won uh, All Stars with Trinity the Tuck. Mm -hmm. Well, I all I have to say, she's a troll because she did a troll commercial with Manila <laughs> together, and they were, wow. you know, their <laughs> dressing rooms are right by each other, and that was an experience that was fun because it happened right before the whole quarantine. So that was yeah. the last like commercial shoot that we shot. Yeah, yeah, she was like the last like drag queen like thing that I got to do with another drag queen for sure. I, I love I love her. I was uh, uh, I was definitely rooting for her on season ten. Was she on season ten? Um, you know, because she was she was from the Bronx like my husband. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So like oh, we, yeah. were, we were voting for our J Lo, you know, our local girl. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we met her at DragCon right before All Stars Four started filming, and it was like in the air that. It wasn't even in the air that they, we knew who was going to be on it, but we remember like kind of fangirling over like, oh my God, Monet, welcome to LA. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's take a look at the other winner of All Stars. Look at Ooh, Trinity the Tuck. These All Stars winners are coming for my look with the yellow. <laughs> yes, how very dare they. <laughs> I love Trinity. Uh, she was she was a lot of fun to compete against because she's very competitive and she has a very uh, a, a very high quality of drag. So it was nice to be able to compete against like you know such a, a strong competitor. And we became really good friends. Like we really would talk game all the time. Like of like what we like how the show was going. Like and you could we could tell like I could tell that like, she got like how reality shows worked. Mm -hmm. You know, some some queens are like, they get there and they're like, oh, I'm not going to say that because you know you want me to say that. I'm like, no, you have to say that because we have to kind of tell the story. Uh huh. You know, so it, like it was it was fun working with her and we've we've been close ever since. Yeah, and she actually taught me a new uh, definition for garage doors. Raja originally taught me that garage doors are one color eyelid, but Trinity has taught us that garage doors are your set. 
because if you see any video that she's been coming out with for this quarantine, it's just her garage door is set up with different props that she orders on Amazon. <laughs> and so I was just like, she's a garage door queen. I live for her, bitch. She hits like, she turns look. She has new looks every single time I see her. She doesn't wear a thing twice. It's like insane. Uh -huh. like, and then she's transforming her garage in um, like her new home. She just bought a new home. And so like they were doing shows in their garage. It's like, it's like, sickening. So I, I'm like, applause, applause yeah. to you, girl, because like she's making it work, oh, you yeah. know? Every Drag Race girl with a garage was doing full productions. When we talked to Ginger Mitch, she was the same thing. She's like, I'm in the garage and we're making the shows. I know, I, we live in a tiny little apartment. So right. I'm like, okay, we're here against this blank wall. <laughs> right. The, the wall actually has many curtain colors. Yeah, you know, I just like, I'm like, yeah, I'm stapling like whatever fabric I had in my <laughs> drag room, like up to the wall. Like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it takes, sweetie. My set, honey. <laughs> okay. Look at all. It's her, Valentina. I love this Valentina. look. Oh. Um, actually, um, speaking of stapling shit to the walls, we had done um, we had done a Pride gig for Amazon Prime um, in June during the quarantine, and we um, we all had to do living room lip syncs, like a bunch of a bunch of queens. Like Michael was able to arrange for a bunch of us queens to like be, participate in this. We got paved with Amazon coins. Mm -hmm. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, I remember when that happened, yeah. Yes, um, but um, I had asked Valentina to be in it, but she was very, like, she was like, I can't do it. Like, I need to have it up to my standards of my fantasy. And so I was like, Valentina, we're going to take care of you. And we, like, snuck her, like, in the pandemic, in the quarantine, we snuck her over to my house. I had dressed up my apartment, and, like, she came in full drag, and I filmed her for this Pride event, Pride Inside, for Amazon Prime. And um, I got a fucking free Valentina show in my goddamn living room, and it was yes. the dumbest thing in the world! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we have our own personal experience with Valentina this quarantine. 2020, was, it was, like, the highlight of our year. <laughs> the highlight. Having Valentina right there maskless in a masking world. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and she knew all her words. <laughs> I bet she did. Because she was singing her own song. Right. <laughs> Hello, children. Click here. Click here. And subscribe. You're welcome.